<laughs> Number 10. The Franklin Expedition The Franklin Expedition was one of the biggest disasters in British naval history. In 1845, two of the best ships that Britain had to offer, the HMS Terror and the HMS Erebus, set sail in search of the Northwest Passage. They wanted to find the quickest route between Europe and Asia that would change the world. Sadly, none of these sailors were ever seen again. Not even the ships were uncovered until researchers from Canada found them still frozen in the ice over a century and a half later. The sailors on these ships suffered a very terrible fate, and as a strange addition to the tale, legend has it that the crew members were torn apart by a monster. We know that once the ships got stuck in the ice, it was game over for the crew. They didn't die right away as they had a lot of rations, but where they were stuck was particularly unfortunate. Captain Franklin and his 128 officers got stuck near King William Island, one of the coldest places in Canada. Even today, in the summer, it can be well below freezing. Understanding that they had nowhere to go, the crews of both vessels tried to look for a way out. Fear turned to desperation and then anarchy. The men began dying of scurvy, tuberculosis, pneumonia, and all kinds of other nasty diseases. Then, as they tried to march out of the ice and back to civilization on foot, they were forced to turn to cannibalism. The local Inuit say many of Franklin's crew cut the heads off their own friends so that they could feast on their brains. One of these stranger legends, which also happens to come from the Inuit, is that once they were alone in the wilderness, Franklin and his crew began to be hunted by a terrible monster that could transform from man to beast. It may have been a tubilak. This creature had huge claws, great speed, and it apparently picked off Franklin's weakened party one by one. In the Inuit religion, a tubilak is a monster created by witchcraft to suck the life force of your enemy. But if it does not complete its mission, it will continue to roam until it finds its creator and kills them instead. Number 9. The Folk Monster In Arkansas, there is a small town called Folk. In the 1970s, a resident of Texarkana, a nearby town, reported that on his way through Folk, he was attacked by a mysterious creature. In an article written by the Texarkana Gazette regarding the event, the victim was identified as Bobby Ford. Bobby told the local constable that the creature was covered in hair, had red eyes, and was lightning fast. It came out of nowhere and attacked him. The creature was over seven feet tall and over three feet thick at the chest. It put its arm around Bobby, yet somehow he managed to break free and run away. Terrified, he ran as fast and as far as he could manage. Bobby had to be treated at the hospital for scratches as well as for the shock he was in from seeing the beast. Bobby also claimed the monster had been hanging around his house for days, and other people saw it too, including his brother, one of his hunting friends, and his wife. Bobby even claimed that his wife was right there when the hairy creature tried to kidnap Bobby straight out of their bedroom window. At the end of 1971, no one except for Bobby and his friends saw the monster. Although the sheriff's department did uncover strange scratch marks at Bobby's house, along with unidentified tracks, nobody could confirm its existence. We don't know if it was real, if Bobby was crazy, or if he saw the monster from Jeepers Creepers and it simply went back into hibernation for another century. Number 8. The French Werewolf Between 1764 and 1767, a werewolf terrorized France and killed as many as 100 people. However, reports from the 1700s are not the most reliable meaning there has been some serious speculation over the most legendary werewolf rampage in recorded history. Here are the facts. According to National Geographic, something terrorized the French countryside around Gévaudan. There is no doubt about that. It started in June 1764 with Jeanne Boulet. She was a shepherd girl of only 14, mauled to death while tending to her livestock. Her horribly mutilated body was discovered by her family, who were shocked to see that the wounds resembled what you would expect from a wolf attack. At the time, they simply assumed that the child had been the victim of a pack of wolves. In the late 1700s, wolves attacking was just a regular part of rural life. In the days that followed, there were more and more fatalities. There were also dismemberments and even decapitations. Whatever the deadly wolf creature was, it had a murderous heart. It became known as La Bette which translates to the beast. That terror went on for three full years. People began to think that the creature was a man-wolf hybrid. 
The country was so distraught about the deadly attacks that the best hunters in the land were sent in by the king to take care of it. On June 19, 1767, John Chastel shot and killed a very big wolf. An unusual wolf, too, with a coat of fur that was red and white, unlike anything anyone had ever seen before. After that, the attack stopped. Number 7. The Beast from Argentina A terrifying monster over 7 feet tall apparently went on a murderous rampage through the streets of Santa Fe in Argentina. We don't know exactly what this monster is or was, but based on the news reports, there appears to be a half-man, half-animal creature stalking the streets at night and attacking people. Footage even leaked of the nightmare beast just after it killed a pair of dogs. The creature has spindly legs, it looks kind of like an alien, and some believe it could be the chupacabra. There really is no consensus on the monster's identity. All anyone knows for sure is that it doesn't look like any animal known to scientists. It's allegedly killed a handful of pets already and scared people back into their homes. And unfortunately for some, it's apparently still lurking somewhere in the back streets of Argentina. Number 6. Real Abductions Sixty years ago, on September 19, 1961, Betty and Barney Hill were kidnapped. They weren't kidnapped by cartel members or some kind of criminal organization. Instead, they claim they were kidnapped by aliens. And whether you believe this story or not, it's the original alien abduction. The one that eventually spread the idea of abductions by little green men through popular culture and into the modern mind. In fact, Bill Ross from UNH has called them the Adam and Eve of alien abduction. Here's what happened according to Betty and Barney. They were driving home from their honeymoon through the White Mountains of New Hampshire. While they were driving, a light was following behind them. They became so annoyed by the trailing light that they pulled their car over. And that was when the light moved to float directly above their vehicle. Then the light got so bright that neither of them could see and they passed out. When Betty and Barney woke up, they were still in their car but miles down the road. They couldn't remember anything that happened for the past two hours. There were strange marks on their car, Betty's dress was ripped and stained, and Barney was also in rough shape. They had no idea what happened, but it felt like something strange had certainly occurred. From that point on, the couple experienced frequent nightmares. They went to see a hypnosis therapist to unlock the suppressed memories. The hypnotist helped Betty and Barney to remember that they were taken into some sort of aircraft and physically evaluated before being let back down to Earth. What do you think of the original abduction story? Let me know in the comments below. Number 5. Murdered by Bigfoot Three farmers are rumored to have been killed by Bigfoot, and if you have Hulu, the true crime documentary Sasquatch is trying to prove it. Why would people believe this outlandish tale? The farmers were working growing cannabis back in the 1990s when they were discovered ripped to shreds, possibly from some kind of large creature with unimaginable strength. The story of the triple homicide goes back to 1993, when investigative journalist David Holdhouse heard about the three murdered cannabis farmers while visiting a pot farm in Northern California. It turned out the three farmers had taken a huge batch of marijuana out to sell, but on their way through the forest, they were ambushed and brutally murdered. When their bodies were found, the thing that struck the other pot farmers as unusual was that the pot was still there. If this had been a drug deal gone bad, the killers would have definitely taken the drugs with them. Instead, it looked as though the three men had encountered a giant, angry ape in the woods. Sadly, there is no way to actually verify the story. Because these people were participating in illegal activities at the time, they couldn't exactly contact the authorities to give names and statements. All we have today is rumor and speculation that this even happened. What do you think happened to the marijuana farmers? Were they murdered by humans? A mysterious creature? Sasquatch? Or something else? Let me know in the comments below. Number 4. Devil Monkeys There have been sightings of devil monkeys all throughout the United States. Devil monkeys are described as looking like giant baboons, with most reports coming from the wooded areas around Arizona. However, they have been found in several different states. One eyewitness claims that her dog was acting very strange as they were walking through the Mount Eldon Forest Trail. That was when she noticed a small group of bizarre creatures moving through the rocks like monkeys. They were about four or five feet tall, extremely agile, and probably dangerous. While they left this woman alone and never attacked her, they almost did give her a heart attack. 
There have been plenty of other reports of devil monkeys spotted in New Mexico, Utah, and even California. Some say they've seen devil monkeys over seven feet tall. What separates devil monkeys from Bigfoot, you ask? Devil monkeys are shaggier, have legs like kangaroos, and they have razor sharp claws on their toes. They've been found as roadkill, dead on the side of the road. They've been caught attacking pets, seen hanging from trees by their tails, and witnessed getting into all kinds of shenanigans. And while nobody actually knows what devil monkeys are, the sheer volume of witness reports means they're either real or all these people are experiencing a mass hallucination. Do you believe in devil monkeys? Let me know in the comments below. Number three, the green clawed beast. According to reports, there is a monster living in the Ohio River at Evansville, Indiana. The unknown creature is said to patrol the river, occasionally attacking unaware swimmers. On August 21st, 1955, while Evansville was being brutalized by 95 degree heat, residents were seeking ways to cool off, and some chose to head to the river for a swim. One of these residents was Naomi Johnson, who took her three kids down to West Evansville to swim in the Ohio River. According to eyewitness reports, Naomi had paddled about 15 feet away from the shore while her kids sat in the grass with one of her friends. Everything was peaceful until suddenly Naomi began thrashing and screaming in the water. Something, which she would later describe as feeling like a very large hand grabbed her knee. It was hairy and almost felt like a claw. It pulled her under the water with extreme force. Luckily, Naomi did eventually manage to break away from the creature and swim back to shore. Paramedics came and treated Naomi for some minor cuts and scratches on her leg, proving that something definitely did grab her in the water. However, we don't know what that something was. Local Evansville folks say it was nothing but a big fish, perhaps a catfish or a garfish. After all, catfish in the Ohio River can be over 100 pounds. But a more interesting theory is that Naomi was attacked by a green clawed beast living in the river. Number two, creature from the deep. During World War I, there was a German submarine that was allegedly attacked by some kind of terrifying sea monster. According to historical reports, the U-boat was commanded by Captain Gunther Krech. The submarine had been cruising along the surface to recharge its batteries when a mysterious monster rose out of the depths and made its move. The people on board the submarine described the monster as having large eyes within a great head that looked kind of like a skull, complete with jagged horns. Its teeth glistened in the moonlight as the monster attacked. The soldiers on board began firing their weapons at the creature, but that didn't stop it from causing so much damage to the submarine that it was no longer able to submerge. By the time the unidentified creature slipped back into the water, the submarine was wrecked. But there is another version of this story that's a lot less exciting. According to the British military, the submarine surfaced on April 30, 1918, and was spotted by a British patrol boat. The patrol boat, the HMS Coryopsis, then proceeded to destroy the submarine and take its crew members as prisoners of war. The Germans say that the whole reason they surrendered in the first place was because of the monster. Number 1. The Bennington Triangle The Bennington Triangle got its name in 1992 when the New England author Joseph Citro needed a name fitting for a patch of land in southwest Vermont. This triangular shape of land was a hotspot for missing people between 1945 and 1950. And although it was popularized in a few books later on, the truth is the Bennington Triangle is very real. Midi Rivers vanished into thin air on November 12, 1945. Paula Weldon vanished on December 1, 1946. She had gone out for a hike and then disappeared without a trace and was never seen or heard from again. More disappearances include James Tedford, Paul Jeffson, and Frida Langer, one after the other. The center of the triangle is somewhere on the Glastonbury Mountain. It encompasses a huge area including Somerset, Bennington, Woodford, and Shaftesbury. This part of Vermont thrived during the industrial boom thanks to the logging towns. However, the 19th century saw a large decline in Vermont's industry, resulting in plenty of ghost towns within the Bennington Triangle. Nobody knows if it was a creature responsible for the disappearances but the Bennington Triangle is considered to be one of the most haunted places in America. Thanks for watching! What's your favorite mysterious monster encounter? Have you ever seen one? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time! Bye!